Hello crafty friends, it's Donna here and I have a set of cards for you today that uses a really nifty stencil. The poinsettia stencil from Pink and Main is a single stencil but the separate areas of the poinsettia are separated out so that you can do them in different colours if you wish and that's what I'm going to do for my first card today. I'm going to start by preparing the stencil. There's a lot of fine detail on these leaves and those little leaf centres are going to move around unless I glue them down. So I'm using Tombow Mono Multi Glue. I bought the glue that you can see on screen in Japan. As you can see, the label's in two languages. As well as the Tombow Multi, it says Pit, and it may be that the name is changing, but as long as you get one that says Multi, it will do the same job. The magic thing about this glue is that if you use it and stick it down wet, you get a permanent bond. But by letting it dry first, I get a removable bond. And I can use that to stick down these little delicate areas, but then have them come off the paper nice and easily when I'm done. I don't need to cover the whole stencil, just the bits that are going to move. And so now I'm going to put that aside to dry. Thanks to the magic of video editing, that's now dry, and I'm pressing it onto my cardstock. I'm going to do the background layer first, I'm not a neat blender, so I'm just making sure I cover any area of the card that I might slip out onto. And I'm going to start with my greens. I'm putting a very light coat of mowed lawn across the whole leaf. And then I'm going to come back with peeled paint just in the centers. Every time I dab into the ink, I start my blending in the stencil so that I rub off any excess onto the stencil itself before spreading it out onto my card. And I can go back and use that extra ink in the middle as a palette and pick some more up and keep going until I'm happy with the colour. Peeled paint is a much darker colour and I've gone in with a heavier hand as well so that I've got some good contrast in the centre of the leaves. Possibly more contrast than I was expecting on that first leaf, but we went with it. The three different elements on this stencil, the outside petals or leaves, depending on how you wish to do them, the inside petals, and the very centre of the flowers are all lined up the same way on the stencil. So you don't need to turn the stencil around to look for which way is up or which way you should go. However you start that stencil, you can just slide it and the next part will fit exactly into place. It's going to leave a tiny little piece of white between the different layers. And so just looking through the stencil, you can move it around until you've got an even amount of white between each of the petals. It really is quite easy to see, except in the case of one of the later cards that I'm going to show you, where I blended in a super light colour. I did not make it very easy for myself. This time, I'm blending abandoned coral across the whole petal, and then a little bit of festive berries in the middle to make a darker centre. I love blending with two different colours. It's always magic when you pull back the stencil. I keep brushes for each colour family and you can see by the tape on the handles which family they're for. And what I was hoping to use for the yellows was my Pink and Main Ergonomic Mini Blender Brush. If anyone's seen it, if you could just let me know where it is, that would be super. Instead, I've had to use a blending brush that I use for my Distress Oxides, and it had too much ink left on it. And so I didn't like the initial pale yellow that the Duckling gave me, just because I had too much ink left on my brush. So I went over the top with that citrine ink which is like an oxide, it's a bit opaque and so it covered up anything I didn't like underneath. You can see here how the stencil just slides into place. I forgot to show you earlier while I was actually doing it. Next I'm going to cut out the images and some background paper using what I think are 
probably, after my Misty, the most used item in my craft room, and that is my stitched rectangles dies. I've got these two sets here, stitched rectangles one and stitched rec rectangles two, and they slot inside each other. And so I can make the finest of borders with the stitching detail. And anyone that's been following my videos for a while knows that no card by me is complete without a stitched border. The sentiment today comes from a stamp set called Winter Cardinals and I've been using these sentiments a lot as well as the birds. Something about how chubby they are that just makes them really appealing to me. In order to stick the layers down, I've showed you this trick before but I thought it was worth repeating. Sometimes I use glue but if I'm using double sided tape, I peel back and fold the two diagonally opposite corners. Then I hold it by the other two corners and flip it over and line it up. Those little tabs where I folded actually hold the adhesive off my background until I'm ready to press it down and then it's simply a matter of sliding out those tabs. I'm going to do it again for the next layer once I've got the card the right way up and you'll see my arm angle actually change because in order to do anything where I line it up I actually stand up and make sure I'm directly above it. just going to give you the world's quickest run through of a couple of different colour schemes that you might like to use. For this pale card I've used duckling ink on all of the petals and then I've just put the lightest touch of peeled paint on the centres of those leaves before putting a heavy coat of peeled paint in the middle to make the centre. For the next card, I've used Simon Says Stamp Apricot Ink as the basis of my petals, although you did see me rubbing a little extra dark ink off in the middle there. Once I'd put the apricot ink across the whole petal, then I went in the same as I did for the first card that I made with the abandoned coral and then festive berries, but because it has the apricot underneath, this whole flower has a much warmer tone. Because this one's much darker and brighter, I've gone with a very bright yellow centre this time. By now my paper has definitely given up the ghost and a couple of those little leaf centres are actually ready for a little bit more glue. They've been on and off the paper more times than you actually saw in this video. When I go back to make more cards with this stencil, and I definitely will, this has been a lot of fun, I will just repeat that process of gluing up the back a little bit before I start. I hope that you've enjoyed this video, that you'll stick around for more by subscribing. I'd love to hear what you think and whether you're doing Christmas cards this year. And if so, what are you doing? Until next time, stay safe. I hope you get some crafty time and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.